Happy Pentecost Sunday, friends. Today is one of the three great feasts of the church. At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus to Joseph and Mary, the living part of God that came among us and walked on the soil of Palestine. On Easter Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection, that Jesus, though dead, was brought to life to promise us eternal life, which we celebrate in these great 50 days. But Pentecost, Pentecost celebrates the great gift of the Holy Spirit, the wind, the breath of God, which breathes in our lungs and outside in the trees, it's the beginnings of the church, and in a minute, Lisa will help us celebrate the birth of the church. And then, as we move through this service, I hope that you will find the opportunity to experience the Holy Spirit where you are today. God is as clear and as near as your next breath. Attached to this video is a PDF document that is the bulletin for the day. It has all the hymns and the lessons so that you can sing along. I hope that right before the gospel that the, the anthem that's offered will offer you a chance to see some of your friends in a great montage of red. The great gift is that God so loved the world that he provides for us again and again. And so as we begin this day, let us give thanks for the gift of Pentecost. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Happy Pentecost, and now here's Lisa Pinkham. Good morning. I am happy to be celebrating with you on this very special day. Let's look at our church calendar here. Here we are, this day we've been waiting for for a long time, the only red day on the calendar. Oh, and it's still hot. Here we are at Pentecost. So we get to sing happy birthday today. Now, way back here at Christmas, we sang happy birthday to Jesus and remembered when God came to earth as a baby, baby Jesus, and we sang happy birthday Jesus when he was born. Today, we get to sing happy birthday to the church. Happy birthday church. So I wonder, are we singing happy birthday to a building? No, we're singing happy birthday to God's church. And God's church is the people of God from every time, from every place on the planet, forever and ever. The people of God. We are the people who know and believe that God is always with us and we will always be with God forever and ever. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit who came down at Pentecost. And when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, it was a reminder that Jesus, before he ascended to heaven, he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit as a way that we would always know that God is always with us. So that's why it's hot. Will you join with me in singing happy birthday to the church? And I discovered that Swedish fish make great flames of fire for our Pentecost birthday cake. So I'll light the candle. Now, as Mr. David plays the piano, we're going to sing happy birthday, dear church, happy birthday to you. And I'm just going to mouth the words so that you can hear the piano and so that you can sing very loudly where you are. So even if you're home by yourself, I hope that you'll sing really loudly and joyfully, knowing that God is with you and God is singing with you too. So we sing. <laughs> Happy 
happy birthday. May there be lots of sparks and flames of joy in your heart and in your home today and the whole year. I'm gonna blow out the candle with me. Happy Pentecost. Our opening hymn is number 225, Hail Thee Festival Day, verses one and four. service for this Pentecost Sunday continues in the Book of Common Prayer, page 355, or in the bulletin we have linked to this uh, video. And for the last time this season, we begin with the Easter greeting, Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. And will you pray with me? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And with the angels we say, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit, shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we listen today to the words of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under the heavens living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them, speaking in the native language of each, amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this was what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall, see, shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portions in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for a Pentecost is 104, 25 through 35 and 37. We will read the psalm responsively by verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works in wisdom, and you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and then they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless, Bless the Lord, Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, 
but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is in the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. And according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophesy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who are lost to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord will. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord Christ. My sisters and brothers, I speak to you today of the Holy Spirit. In all of our time of separation, in all of our time at stay at home and safer at home, in all of this time, 
the Holy Spirit has been at work in the world. Of course, the Holy Spirit was beginning in the beginning of the world itself. When things were created and the wind of God moved over the heavens and the earth. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures, throughout the story of the ancestors, we hear again and again how the wind of the Spirit entered into Samson and into David and into all of the leaders that carried the people of God forward. The wind of God separated the waters at the Red Sea. And the wind of God blew when Ezekiel saw the valley of dry bones, bringing back to life a vast army through the power and might of the Lord. Today, as we find ourselves in a different world, a different kind of separation, a different kind of shutdown, the Holy Spirit is still alive and active. And the first thing I want you to think about is that the Holy Spirit is a person. Megan McKenna, in her wonderful book, Praying the Rosary, comes to the joyful mystery, the glorious mystery of, the, uh, of Pentecost, of the giving of the Holy Spirit to the church. Megan writes, there are so many names and images for this gift of God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. The word person, from the Latin means per, through, and sonar, sound. And so person means to sound through. This image is how is the God of how we hear, through whom we know and understand, with whom we live the word and the will of Father God, in the person of Jesus incarnate and risen. The Spirit sings, whispers, enlightens, frees, instills courage, gives meaning, opens our ears and our eyes. It penetrates, transforms, and empowers us as once the same Spirit did to the person of Jesus. The Spirit speaks now in us, in believers, in everything of the church. The voice of the Spirit sounds a clarion call in refugees, in the homeless, in the victims of violence in the streets and in war, the children of old, in weather patterns that change because of human beings' choices, in the events of history, in politics, economics, other religions, cultures, and in the prophets. The Holy Spirit speaks. The person is the sounding block of God that happens all around us. In the smallest of ways, the Holy Spirit speaks in our hearts. When we quiet ourselves to the busyness of the world, when we quiet ourselves to the crush of responsibilities and things around us, it is the Holy Spirit that speaks that still small voice in our heart. But the Holy Spirit is also the explosive power of God. In the first reading today, we hear of God's people there in the upper room, there where they had encountered the risen Jesus. Fifty days after Jesus' resurrection, they are there together, not knowing what will happen. In the Hebrew calendar, this is the Feast of Weeks. It's seven weeks into the planting season, and it's time for the first fruits to be harvested. In Jesus' day and time, people went up to Jerusalem with those first offerings, and they began the process anew of renewing themselves. It was also the feast of the giving of the law, the giving of Torah, so that God's people would have the instruction of how to live. The Holy Spirit speaks as we give our gifts, and the Holy Spirit also speaks as God gives back to us the law and the instruction and the way. On that Pentecost day, men were transformed into speakers of other languages. They were transformed into people who could proclaim the mighty acts of God. And thousands were bought to believe because the Spirit moved in them. The community that Paul knew in Corinth had no trouble with the Spirit at all. A Greek population who were accustomed to invoking many different gods, the Corinthians had embraced Jesus and they had said that his lordship was essential. Paul can affirm with the Corinthians that no one can say Jesus is Lord without the presence of the Spirit. And the Corinthians did love their spirit. 
But Paul goes on to tell them that the Spirit isn't just given willy-nilly across the world. The Spirit is not just scattered out like some kind of, of seed spread out with no accountability. Instead, God gives varieties of gifts through the same Spirit. God gives variety of services, but the same Lord. God gives varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates them in every one. You see, the Spirit is the activator in our lives. The Spirit takes the things that we think about and the affirmations and the deeds that we have done and activates them to make them alive and present in the world. And Paul says each of us receives these gifts. These are not gifts that are held only by the bishops. These are not gifts held only by the clergy. These are not gifts held only by the vestry. Paul says to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Now just imagine that for a minute, friends. You are given a gift of the Spirit for the common good. You and the people in your household are given gifts for the common good of Christ Church Parish, of Christians in this country, of Christians and people of faith around the globe. And Paul begins to speak of the way in which that spirit activates within us, the things that we can hold on to that show that we are a part of the moving spirit of God, the spirit of the utterance of wisdom. Wisdom is that deep knowledge that comes from God. Wisdom is that sense that all of creation is tied together. Wisdom is that sense that underneath it all is a profound understanding of the whys and the hows. But it's also given the utterance of knowledge. There are certain rules and things that need to be learned. There are scientific principles in this world. The ways in which we address viruses or climate change or world hunger they are all part of a knowledge base that we can address, and the Spirit activates that within us. And faith. Some people tell me that they don't feel like they have enough faith, and yet Paul says that the gift of faith is given to the community by the Holy Spirit. That gift of trust, the ability to walk one step and one step and another. And gifts of healing. I have seen these with my own eyes. I have prayed for people that I did not have any idea what the outcome would be, and the Spirit has moved in their lives to make them whole and new. And even among those who were ill, who did not recover, they came to a new understanding, a healing of their whole self in the midst of the struggle, whatever it was they confronted, and the works of miracles, those things that simply cannot be there are ways in which the world changes that we could not possibly imagine. And the workers of miracles are given those spiritual gifts at the right time for things to be accomplished. The gift of prophecy, which is not simply knowing what's going to happen in 2021 or 2031 or 2091. Instead, the spirit of prophecy is speaking truth to power. It's saying that lives matter and that people whose lives are extinguished by disease or by violence, that they are known and seen by God. That those who we account as lesser are known and seen by God. That is the spirit of prophecy and the discernment of spirits. There are lots of ways in which we can be lured from one place to another by this idea or that. And it requires the discernment of spirits to say, this is life-giving, and this is not. This is of God, and this is not. In various kinds of tongues. I've never really experienced the gift of praying in tongues. I've been in groups who, where praying in tongues was quite normative. And it is astonishing to me to watch someone dis move from, from a place of rational thought and words and nouns and verbs into a place where the conversation with God is just open. It's heard, but not always understood. And so the interpretation of tongues in the Spirit helps us to understand how it is that God is moving. Paul gives us this list not as a job description, not as a, if you want to have a parish, you have to have these gifts, but instead to show the many ways in which the Spirit activates each one of us for the common good. 
And as we are activated by the Spirit, each one of us is given the gift as the Spirit chooses. The body, our body, our body, the church, and your body itself has many members, many parts, toes and eyes and ears and hair and navels. All of us are made up of many, many parts, and yet those parts become one body in Christ. It's when you bring your gift, your passion, your joy, your art, your insight, when you bring that to the table, we are all activated. I know it's harder to see right now because you're not here in this room. I look about and I see the empty pews and, and my heart breaks and yet I know that the Spirit is calling us together. Yet I know that people are being fed from this place and more people are studying in this place than have ever studied in my seven years here. I know that children are being nurtured and that our elders get good words offered to them by so many of you. Each of you has been activated so that as our many parts are separated, they are drawn together by the Holy Spirit. Paul concludes, so in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jew or Greek, slave or free, and made to drink of one spirit. The Corinthians had shattered off into little groups. Some of them arrived early to church and, and ate their food before others were able to. Some were practicing immoralities that caused Paul to have to call them out. But in this chapter and the next, when he tells us about the greatest gift of the Spirit, the gift of love, we begin to see how the pattern is transformative of each of us. You see, Pentecost Sunday is about a big movement. It's about a grand thing. It's about 11 preaching to a whole mass and, and bringing them to know the Lord Jesus. But it's also about the gift that is poured out on you today in the place where you are. God is working out the divine purpose even when we don't understand it, even when it's not something we ask for. God is calling us to be something more, something new, something larger. One of my heroes is Parker Palmer, a Quaker author, a teacher, a spiritual man of the highest order. Parker has often allowed me to see my life in the ebbs and flows because he's willing to show both his woundedness and the gifts that he receives from that. In his book, Let Your Life Speak, and in a couple of other places, he's told the story a story from his life that may help you to understand this whole business of receiving the Spirit and then knowing how to move forward. He writes, here's a small story from my life about why one might want to take the inward journey. In my early 40s, I decided to go to a program called Outward Bound. I was on the edge of my first depre depression, a fact that I only knew dimly at the time. And I thought that Outward Bound might be a place to shake up my life and learn something that I needed to know. I chose a week-long course at Hurricane Island off the coast of Maine. I should have known from the name what was in store for me. Next time I will sign up for one in Happy Gardens or Pleasant Valley. Though it was a week of great teaching and deep community and genuine growth, it was also a week of fear and loathing. In the middle of that week, I faced a challenge I feared most. One of our instructors backed me up to the edge of a cliff 110 feet above solid ground. He tied a very thin rope to my waist, a rope that looked unkempt to me, and seemed to, and started, seemed to be starting to unravel. And he told me to start rappelling down the cliff. Do what, I said. Just go, the instructor explained, in typical outward bound fashion. And so I went and immediately slammed into the ledge some four feet down from the edge of the cliff with bone jarring, brain jarring force. The instructor looked down at me and said, I don't think you got it quite right. Right, I said, being in no position to disagree. So what am I supposed to do? The only way to do this, he said, is to lean back as far as you can. You have to get your body at right angles to the cliff so that your weight will be on your feet. 
It's counterintuitive, but it's the only way that it works. I knew that he was wrong, of course. I knew that the trick was to hug the mountain and stay as close to the rock face as I could. And so I tried again and again my way and slammed into the next ledge another four feet down. You still don't have it, the instructor said helpfully. Okay, tell me again, what am I supposed to do? Lean way back and take the next step. The next step was a very big one, but I took it, and wonder of wonders, it worked. I leaned back into empty space, fixed my eyes on the heavens in prayer, and made teeny, teeny moves with my feet, and started descending down the rock face, gaining confidence with every step. I was about halfway down when the second instructor called up from below, Parker, I think you better stop and see what's just below your feet. I lowered my eyes very slowly so as not to shift my weight, and I saw that I was approaching a deep hole in the face of the rock. In order to get down, I would have to get around that hole, which meant I could not maintain a straight line of descent that I had started to get comfortable with. I would need to change course and swing myself around that hole to the left or to the right. I knew for certain that attempting to do so would lead directly to my death, and so I froze, paralyzed with fear. The second instructor let me hang there, trembling in silence for what seemed like a very long time. Finally, she shouted up these helpful words, Parker, is there anything wrong? To this day, I do not know where the words came from, though I have 12 witnesses to the fact that I spoke them in a high, squeaky voice. I said, I don't want to talk about it. Then, said the second instructor, it's time you learned the outward bound motto. Oh, Keen, I thought, I'm about to die and she's going to give me a motto. Then she shouted 10 words that I hope I will never forget. Words whose impact and meaning I can still feel. If you can't get out of it, get into it. If you can't get out of it, get into it. I had long believed in the concept of the word made flesh, but until that moment I had never experienced it. My teacher spoke words so compelling that they bypassed my mind and went into my flesh and animated my legs and my feet. No helicopter would come and rescue me. The instructor on the cliff would not pull me up with the rope. There was no parachute in my backpack to float me to the ground. There was no way out of my dilemma except to get into it. And so my feet started to move, and in a few minutes, I was safely down. I have hung on that rock. I have hung with my body out in the air, believing that there was no way up and no way down, that there was simply no way. And I stood there, waited there, knowing that whatever happened, I had no control over it. And then the word was spoken. The person, the one who we speak through, spoke to my heart and helped me to know the way. Friends, there is no roadmap for COVID except to say that if you can't get out of it, get into it. It is time for us to wear our masks and care for our neighbors. It is time for us to wash our hands and give food to the poor. It is time for us to be the church studying Holy Scripture and saying our prayers day after day. The Holy Spirit is available at all times. The wind of God moved on that Pentecost through the doors of the upper room where the disciples thought they were hidden and locked away and said, if you can't get out of this, get into it. The Holy Spirit moves in your life today, in the lives of the people that you know and love, those in the household and those who are completely unknown to you. The Holy Spirit is ready to move. That person who speaks and activates the tissues of our body, the body of the church. Christ church can emerge from this stronger and wiser and speaking in tongues that will allow all the world to see and know God's grace. May our loving, 
liberating and life-giving God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus of Nazareth, and the God who made us all bless you and those whom you love today and every day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we return to our liturgy with the words of the Nicene Creed, professing together the ancient faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join in prayer for ourselves, for the church, and for the world. The prayers of the people are according to Form 4, found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Santosh, our bishop, and all clergy and lay leaders. We pray for people of all faiths around the globe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another, serve the common good. We remember especially Donald, our president, Larry, our governor, the Congress, and the courts. We also pray for the leaders of the world and for the work of the World Health Organization. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We pray especially for scientists and medical personnel working to end this pandemic, for the nurses, doctors, emergency responders, and all who serve in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray especially for the children of our parish and this community, for the Christ Church Day School, for teachers and parents and all workers whose livelihoods are imperiled by this outbreak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, remembering this morning those listed on the par parish prayer list. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that you will for them may be fulfilled. We pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We remember especially those who have died in the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Share a sign of peace with those around you, and extend your arms of love to the whole body of Christ at Christ Church Parish. <coughs> My sisters and brothers, I long for the day when we can share the Holy Communion together. These days of separation are important in keeping the virus at bay. And so as we share together, we realize that the Holy Spirit has been poured out on each and every one of us. God, the Holy Spirit is present in your home today. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer and a prayer for spiritual communion adapted from the Church of England's common prayer. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus and ask him to be with you now. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask that you come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend, and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today. <coughs> I offer myself to you. Hear my prayer for others, for myself, and keep me in your care. Amen. The day of Pentecost is a day for great blessing, and so a triple blessing today, followed by the Trinitarian blessing. Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with his blessing, that you may abound more and more in that spirit forever. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your heart and make them shine with the pure light of his presence. Amen. May God, who by the Holy Spirit has caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to him in word and deed. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our final hymn is Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Is my 
pray. Thank you, friends, for spending this time with your parish family on Pentecost, a great feast of the church. I hope that you have a great celebration today about the birthday of the church and the fact that we continue to be missionaries out in the world. The Holy Spirit empowers you each day, each hour, each minute to be God's witness in the world. We are deeply grateful for your continued contributions, which come in through digital means, through tapping on the website, or by sending in checks. We're grateful for this money, which continues to allow us to do the work that we have in this parish that continues even while our doors need to be closed. We await instructions from the diocese about beginning uh, to gather for worship and other gatherings. Uh, and as that becomes known, we will share it with you so that we can do this as safely as possible. But there are still opportunities every week for you to interact with your sisters and brothers at Christ Church Parish. Christian Formation at 10 a.m. with Lisa Pinkham gives our youngest members a chance to experience each other and to hear about the good news at their level. Coffee Hour at 10.30 on Zoom allows us to see each other, to check in and find out what's going on. Wednesday nights, we're studying the Apostles' Creed. And in the days to come, a new book study that Connie Clark is beginning will be announced on a Zoom format. We're sending out a parish newsletter this week. And that parish newsletter contains a COVID survey. I know we've sent some messages out, but we'd like to hear from you about what you need, and about what you have to offer. It's difficult in these times to know who to ask for various bits and pieces, both you asking us, but also we asking you for the ways in which we can safely be the church together. June the 5th, I will have been a deacon, an ordained person for 35 years. I give thanks to Mimi and my family and all who have supported me in 35 years of ordained life. Remember me at your table on June the 5th and know that God continues to work in my heart and mind in a way that I never expected. I am deeply grateful for all you are, for the amazing staff that we have, and I continue to pray that the day will come when we can see each other face to face. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today and every day. Amen.